But by these girls here. So we're about set to go. The quarterfinal for the Cup Division and the Pearls get us underway. And it hasn't quite gone the required metres until now. Well, it bounced over there. So lucky, lucky, lucky for the Pearls, the early blemish. They wouldn't have needed that one, Peter, as they look to spread the ball around the Ozbox. Yeah, the Ozbox just go up the middle of the field. This is where they were strong yesterday. This is where they'll dominate if they can get possession, but unfortunately they've turned it over. And now here we see the Australian Pearl spinning it out wide. That's Parry. She comes back on the inside and she's down with inside the 22. They'll spin it from right to left. Opportunity now. It comes back away now to Kaslik. Out wider. Back to Morrison. Morrison's got support. Tony Gato. She'll score the first try. Try time to the Australians. They lead 5 0. Well, it didn't take them long. And all matches yesterday, they scored under a minute, Peter. And they've kept true to that form. And look at that. Tony Gato. She's leading the try scoring, I believe in this tournament at the moment. Well, let's have a look on the instant replay of this try in the first two minutes of the match. It was beautiful support play. Have a look at this. Draw and pass. Positional play superb by Tony Gato. She got on the outside of Skelton, and that's the first try here after two minutes to that point. Scorer on screen right now. 5-0. Here's the kick now from five metres in. Absolute Shocker of a kick, yeah. if you could say that. But well, there's the try scorer. She, she got them off the boot nicely yesterday. But this wind, it's coming across the field. So that was a tough kick from the sideline there. As she comes back now to take the kickoff. And we saw off that first kickoff, didn't go 10 on the full. But this wind, they're going to have to try and kick deep here, I'd imagine, Peter. Yeah, the wind, of course, pretty much familiar story to yesterday, Gareth. The wind coming out of the south, so it's... Behind the Aussie Pearls in the first half. That's gone the required meterage. Well, that was pinpoint there as Parry came through on the ball, but they open up on that far touch line there. Coming infield now, setting up some play and a good chance now to counter as Kaslik. She's standing wide, has Tonegato outside her. And here comes Morrison. It bounces for her. She picks it up, gets away, can't get a ball away. So she'll set up the play here right now as the ball comes out wide. Looking to use the width of the field here, the girls. The Pearls side, sorry. And that's a penalty. So, first blemish, quick tap taken. Kaslik standing to the right. Ball in two hands, turning the play back in field, looking to link up. And Tonegato, she's there as always. Morrison's on her outside, the in and away. Draw and pass all. And the ball just going through the hands there of Morrison. She picks up, she does well. She'll regroup here. Oh, look at that. Slam down into the ground. So another chance now for the Pearls. They've had all the possession since the kickoff here. They're leading by five points to nil. Are we about to see a try coming out wide? We probably will. Dalton, she gets it back on the inside. And Tony Gatto, she gets her second of the day in the space of only two minutes. Oh, she's an absolute superstar, Tony Gatto. But let's take nothing away from the other superstars in the side. Kaslik, you know, to Dalton. The big strides, the inside ball. And Tonegato, she's such a brilliant finisher. Oh, she's a try-scoring machine. She picked up around five tries yesterday. And she has started finals day here in absolute perfection form. Have a look at this. There's the support coming from the try-scorer. She picks it up. The ultimate blonde try-scoring machine. And she scores underneath the post. It's early days, but it's still Australia leading by 10 points to nil. The kick is successful as well, Gareth. So we've got three minutes to go in the first half. It's the Australian Pearls goal leading by 12 points to nil over the Ozbox. Yeah, we saw them really hit their strides late yesterday afternoon, the Australian Pearls side. Now let's see if they really turn it on coming towards this second half here. So hashtag CC7's getting contact with us here on the coast. Well, the ball not making the 10 there. And Tonegato forced to pick the ball up as the Ozbox side with really their first chance now to attack in the game. The first time they'll be able to rumble inside the Pearls half here. They've had to wait five and a half minutes for this opportunity. Let's see what they can dish up. This is Hellu. She offloads the pass. It's on the ground. It's scooped up. There's space out here. If they can execute their movement, this is where they're trying to come. The wing is on the outside in Patricia but she was unable to get to the ball. It's on the ground, scooped up by the Pearls, but the referees called it up here right on halfway. 
Yeah, a little knock on there and a couple of jersey changes as well for this Osbok side playing. Obviously, the, the jersey clash they had to swap into the Waratahs outfit here today. But in any case, it'll be the Pearls again putting pressure in defence here. And we'll see if they can cause a turnover in this scrum, which they did on a couple of times yesterday. Interesting. Uh, Parker's come on the field in the pink headgear. Had a good tournament yesterday. Had a good day. One. And she, she plays out wide and scores a couple of tries in her own right, Peter. So the scrum being formed and won here by the Ozbox. They're going to chip and chase. Chipping and chasing. McGregor's going back to clean it up inside her 22. She's got support too. This is where the Australians are dangerous. They love space. They love free movement. And they've got support if they can offload. But they can't and they take the tackle there. That's Tony Gatto. She'll now throw it out wide. Comes back to now to McGregor. They're about to hit the halfway line. Now to Dalton. She's down the touchline. She's got support. It comes back there now to Anderson. Shut the gate. That's the third try in the first half. And they're over again. It's 17 points to nil. It's a carve up early on. Well, shut the gate. The horse is bolted. Reminiscence of the great winks yesterday. That was about eight lengths there, Peter. Oh, bolted in. And looks like in the first half... The Australians, if they can keep this up, running like this and support play like that and going 30 metres to score, a great try there, was Brooke Anderson. That's her first on finals day here in the Central Coast Sevens for 2016. And the kick has hit the post and then it's bounced back and hit the crossbar and back into the field of play. So no change here on the Bar TV Sports scoreboard. We're approaching half time. It's 17 points to nil. We've seen three tries in the first half here to the Aussie Pearls on finals day here in the Central Coast Sevens. So back to halfway. The Aussie Pearls will get us back underway. The siren has gone in the background. So we're only seconds away from uh, half time here at Murray Breen Oval. Ozbox, what have they got? They've been down in this end of the field for the majority of the first half. They've only been inside the Australian Pearls half for probably about uh, 30 seconds out of that seven minutes. There's space out wide if they can pass, but they go up the middle and take the tackle there. Just short of the halfway line. Back there now to the Australian Pearls. And they come away with it, Gareth. This is the movement that they love to do. This is the movement they're able to get. This is Elliot down the touchline. Great tackle there by the Oz Box. Yeah, Back. great covering defence there, Peter. As Parker now has the ball. They'll shift it wide. There's plenty of space out there. Caslick goes back infield. Tries to palm off off Ngarway. Just can't get away. She can't. She's only within about 15 metres of the line. Siren's gone in the background, and that's half time. That's half time in our first match on finals day here at Murray Breen Oval. We go to the break with the Aussie Pearls with a convincing lead at half time. 17 points to nil over the Oz box. Yes, this Canisio Cup certainly is going to heat up today. And none more so than these Australian Pearls women's side. They are certainly looking like the standout favourites here. Be interesting to see. Up next, we've got Japan playing in the Canisio Cup side of the draw. The Oz box take nothing away from them. They've had to defend all game, Peter. Oh, they sure have. But this is the side that's going places in sevens. And on the Rugby League platform, that's their opposition on screen now, just saying, girls, we just haven't had any possession inside the opposition's half at all throughout the entire seven minutes here. And that's why they're pretty much down by 17 points to nil. So they're just saying, look, three tries in it. They're back into the contest. There's their coach on screen now, Dale Winslow. And there's the wide shot. A bumper crowd in here for finals day. We'll be on air right through to the cup final. Called, of course, by Gareth around 5.20 tonight. So a plethora of sport coming your way today on Bar TV Sports. Yes, yeah, certainly is. Big, big day here in Wyong. Big, big day at Central Coast. Of course, if you are thinking about coming down the ground, it's an amazing day. There's food stalls. There's food tents. You know, you can go and see the guys at Canisio, University of Newcastle, Fitness First. They're everywhere. And it's going to be a great day. And the crowd is slowly building, Peter. Yeah, indeed. Family and friends and supporters of this concept. Entertained by the minute. There they are now. There's the canteen. 
Jobbo's uh, bar not quite open yet, Peter. Big Mama's Pies, they're back in action for day two. How nice did they go down yesterday? Oh, I got one early this morning. The bacon and egg pie was absolutely sensational. There's the tent from the UON, one of the match day sponsors here, the major partner of the UON, and there's the crowd. And there's our referee about to blow. Time underway for the second half here. Of course, big a year for her as well. She's gone on. She was the match, the third official in a couple of Super Rugby games. So really kicking on the career. And the Central Coast Sevens is all part of that developing not, not only players, as we said yesterday, but officials as well. So it'll be Ozbox here to kick off. And it'll be start of the second half of the first match today. And this one is a better kick. It's gone deep, straight down to Tungar Tonegato and Kaslik now running at speed, turning back inside. Tonegato now dancing, toying with him. Back to Kaslik as they spread the ball wide, Pete. Inside their 22. They love to throw it. There's that pass. It was a wild pass. Picked up by McGregor. Now she's put the foot to the accelerator and she's going to throw it out the back. So they're inside their own 22 and they're going to run it. Can they offload? They do, but it's on the ground. The Pearls have got to go back and pick it up. And that's Parker, and the ball's gone over the sideline here, about 30 metres out from their own line. Yes, Parker just caught a little bit isolated then. Double knock on, says the referee. So we'll now go to another scrum here, and it'll be a good chance to see how they can play out of their own half here, Peter. So the scrum here as we go down to the ground shot, taking you the fan. Right amongst the thick of it here today. We'll see plenty of blood. We'll see plenty of sweat and tears and triumphancy throughout the day. No doubt about that. We may not see quite blood. It's well, not a bloody contest. Geez. But I'll tell you it's what, there'll be call, a lot of sweat here today. It's a humid <laughs> day here on the coast, Gareth. Hates it's... an exaggeration now, Peter Jolly. Oh, nothing <laughs> like it, mate. As they come out wide now to the right-hand side, look at that great defence by the Pearls on the Oz box. They're driving them backwards now. And this is Patricia Redrocker with the ball. They've turned it over, and now they capitalise. That's Morrison. She steps. She weaves. She's still going, Morrison. And she's within about uh, 30 metres out from the opposition's goal line. Penalty, though, going the way, though, to the Oz box here, Gareth. Yeah, Caslick just coming in. She went in pretty hard at the clean-out there and, and just lost her feet, but she certainly put her body on the line and looking to consolidate the ball. So it's going to be a turnover, and we'll see how they go and how they play out of their own... 22 almost here, Peter. There's the ball on the ground. Scooped up. Here's a chance. Where's the support? Thrown out the back door. They've got to go back and clean it up. And they've been cleaned up there by oh, Parker. That was great skills by Parker. The tackle and dispossessing. But they come back with the ball. The Osbacks. Oh, yeah. She's going to be offside there. Definitely coming in from the wrong side of the ruck was Maddie Elliott. So a relieving penalty here. Let's see what they choose to do. They're just going to take the quick tap, as you'd expect. That's Skelton with the football. Now running up towards the... And past the 22. There's a not a great ball there by Servo. And that's going to be easy turnover back there now to the Pearls. You can't afford to do that against the Pearls. They'll definitely put you to shreds if you continue that. That's Elliot now. She's brought down about 25 metres out. Now it comes back to the Oz box and cleaning it up there with Skelton there. Gareth just outside their own 22-metre line. Yeah, she did very well there, Skelton. Really forcing herself on that, but she was absolutely dealt with by Kaslik, who drove her back about three or four times. And now she's going to come from the field as Parker almost picks up and goes there. And she had Brooke Anderson on the outside, but the referee calls it back. So still... No change to the halftime scoreboard. 17 points to nil in favour of the Pearls. We see C.S. Latia. She's come on the field now. And yesterday, she was probably the standout player of the tournament in this Canisio Cup side. And she's playing a little bit wider here now in that sort of centre channel, as we see in the sevens. And it'll be interesting to see. She'll be the go-to player here with Kaslik off the field. So it's an Ozbox feed for this scrum. And it's well done. It could come back. Yeah, it comes through the other side of the channel. So here come the Aussie Pearls looking to make their mark straight away. And see her, see her. She gets away from one. She's going to go all the way, Peter. And that's a pretty good try. Yeah, she's going to go all the way untouched. Patricia Rodroco was in pursuit. 
but couldn't catch the pace and the agility of our try scorer on screen there. So that's the first try in the second half to the Australians. They lead now by, they skip out to 22 points to nil. And this is how they've clocked up that five-pointer, just the in and away. Nobody was going to catch it with over 20 metres left to run. So a, a tough conversion, though, coming up for the Australians. They're kicking into the gale here. And uh, that's evident there. The ball just was pushed back into the breeze, Gareth. So no change. Two minutes to go in this clash. It's still 22 points to nil. It's one-way traffic here at Mori Breen Oval. Yeah, just the class of this Australian women's side. Proving a little bit too much here for the Ozbox Invitational team. They can hold their head high, though. They definitely can. They came close yesterday against the, the Aussie girls' green side. Well, they've been able to find the edge of the eastern side here. Touchy's put a flag up over there on the eastern touchline. Not long to go. One minute 38 on our destination New South Wales scoreboard here. We stand by for our next match. Our next match will feature Japan. Looking forward to that one. They're taking on the New Zealand Wasps. Lunchtime over the ditch in New Zealand. So we'll have a massive fan base watching the Wasps take on the Japanese. But right now, they're away again. McGregor, pin the ears back. She does. She pins the ponytail back too. That's flopping around in the breeze. And she's under the post. That's the second try of the second half. 27 to 20 to 0. 27 to 0, yeah. And this is a comprehensive victory. And it's certainly a signal in this Canisio Cup side of the draws. We see a step through there. Poor defending. Thought she was going to get run down, mowed down there. But, yeah, the pace was just too strong. And in the end, she was too fast. Let's see if they can convert the try. McGregor from right in front stabs at it. She likes it. The touch judges. They don't move. So 26 seconds to go here in the match. It's the Australians out now by 29 points to nil. Well, they certainly did move. The flag went up, and I think that's for the first time here today. So kicking today all throughout the, this tournament is going to be tough for all, all sides of the draw. So Anderson puts boot to the ball off the right boot, drills it downfield in the Oz box here. Well, that's the story of their entire match, haven't they? The gold haven't been able to... You know, the goal, I guess, has just been able to drive them inside their own half, and that's all their classes. The Oz box put it onto the toe. They're chasing through, but going away now to clean up for the Pearls is McGregor. McGregor just sees this one go into touch about 18 metres out from their own line, and that's full time. Yeah, the Hooter went there, and just getting through the game, getting through the day is the key now for these Pearls. Uh, ladies' side, they're, they're out and out favourites. They may even come against the Aussie Green side later in the day, Peter. Or for all intents and purposes, uh, this Japanese side playing next could be the Smokies. Yeah, this Japanese side, I mean, they fly under the radar. You know, they go about their uh, rugby in a casual, relaxed sort of style. And that was evident yesterday. But when they put the foot down, there is 